Hello, my name is Barbara Kustra. I'm the director of the Montana Museum of Art and Culture at the University of Montana in Missoula. It's great to be with you today and share some really exciting news about Shakespeare's first folio. We have coming to Missoula from May 9th through May 31st this year, the most exciting thing that's happened here in a long time, and that's called The Book That Gave Us Shakespeare, a first folio, a real deal is coming to Missoula. This is a once in a lifetime opportunity to share one of the volumes that captured the creativity and the imagination of William Shakespeare. It's spectacular, and it's available for us to see live and in person at our galleries at the University of Montana, which is in the Performing Arts Radio Television Center. We've got many hours we're going to be open for while the folio is here, and we would love it if you could come visit, or at least read all about the first folio and how Shakespeare has meant so much in all our lives. Have your folks ever said, you're eating me out of house and home? Did you know that that kind of language came from Shakespeare? He invented it. Or how about knock knock, who's there? That's not just a joke that showed up out of nowhere. William Shakespeare started it in one of his plays. And so we are having almost a festival of Shakespeare in Missoula, and we're really excited about it. We've got lots of great partners, lots of talent will be streaming through, and the first folio will be available to, to be seen. I'm here with Julie Biondo Edwards, and she is the brains behind this project. <laughs> she put it together. She wrote a very special proposal to the Folger Shakespeare Library in Washington, D.C., and with her wonderful writing skills, she was able to persuade them to share it with us. We're the only place in Montana this time to see it, so we sure hope you join us and bring your parents and your brother and your sister. Maybe not your dog. He's not allowed in the galleries. I'm sorry but it's pretty darn exciting, and we hope you join us. Julie, what would you like to tell us about the folio? So my name, as Barbara said, is Julie Biondo Edwards. I am a member of the faculty at the Mansfield Library at the University of Montana, and I'm a librarian here, and I am delighted to be working with Barbara at the museum to bring this amazing book to the state of Montana. So um, I wanna to talk to you a little bit about what the folio is, and um, why we have this partnership between the library and the museum to bring this extraordinary item here to campus. So what you'll see in front of us today is a facsimile of the first folio. So this book is the first collected edition of Shakespeare's plays. It was printed in 1623, seven years after Shakespeare died. Shakespeare, as you know from your English classes, was a playwright. He was also an actor himself, and so two of his fellow actors got together, they gathered all of his plays, and put them into this one bound volume, which was really unique at the time because plays were not often gathered in this way. And so this book is really unique and it's really special because 18 of Shakespeare's plays would have been lost if his fellow actors hadn't put together this first folio. So you might have read or performed Macbeth or The Tempest in your classes. It's really possible that we wouldn't have either of those plays if Shakespeare's actors hadn't put the first folio together after he died. So I want to give you a few sort of fun facts about the folio and then we'll talk a little bit about the differences between this book that you see here and the book that we'll be getting in May that Barbara's housing in the museum. When the first folio was printed in 1623, there were about 750 copies that were printed. Every single one of them is unique in some ways. So the size might be a little different or the typeface might be a little different. Every single one is truly an original. Today, there are about 250 first folios left across the world. We are getting our copy from the Folger Shakespeare Library in Washington, D.C., and they are sending us a first folio, one of the 82 that they have in their library. It's the largest collection of the folios that exist in the world. Um, so it's quite a rare book. All last week, Another first folio was found in a Scottish house on the Isle of Boot. It was in someone's private library. It had been there forever. And so we have now one more first folio out in the world. 
So this book, when it was printed, cost about 20 shillings, which today would be about $200. And the last time one of these sold at auction, it sold for over $5 million. So it's a really rare book. It's a re really unique book. It weighs about five pounds. Um, so what we have here in front of us is a facsimile. So this book is housed in the Mansfield Library Archives and Special Collections. And it's a reproduction of the first folio. So the book that you see here is bound differently, the typeface is different, the, the pages are different, they have these large borders on them. This is quite different from the 400-year-old book that is going to be in Montana in May. And one of the things that I'm so excited about having this book here is creating this wonderful collaboration between libraries and museums. So we realized when we were putting the application together that there were really strict rules by the Folger Library about the environmental and the lighting conditions and the security conditions to keep this book really safe and well cared for. We have a wonderful library here on campus, but we were not able to meet the environmental requirements. In fact, even the lights in this room that are shining down on this book are too bright to house the original. And so we talked to Barbara and said, Barbara, could we use the museum to house this amazing book? And Barbara, to her credit, said yes. And so we have created over two years this excellent partnership. So I think Barbara's going to talk a little bit about what makes the museum environment so important for housing this book on campus. Thanks, Julie. So yes, Julie mentioned that the lighting in this room is kind of intense. And why is that? It's because books are, of course, made of paper. And these pages are the facsimile pages, but the authentic, real pages are very delicate. And so we want very low lighting levels. Think about your house. If you have a poster hanging on the wall and you have sunlight beaming right on it, it usually fades and pretty quickly. We have to be great caretakers and stewards of a special object like this and take incredible care that not too much light will shine upon it. And similarly, that it's secure, that nobody touches it, that no one has any drinks or food around it, and those kinds of rules, which are pretty standard for museums. I love what Julie said a minute ago, too, about how museums and libraries are almost like brothers and sisters, or at least they're like cousins, because while libraries are fabulous for finding a wonderful book you want to read, museums are all about being a library too. It's just that what we share is a different kind of visual material. It's ceramics, it's paintings, it's works on paper, like this fabulous book. And so our job is a different kind of job, but it's still to share and educate and inspire and make you have some fun about seeing visual material and, and learning a lot from it because our collection, which belongs to everybody that lives in Montana, is almost 11,000 pieces strong and we are the stewards. We try to be the best stewards we can, taking good care so that everybody that lives in the state can come and share these wonderful things and so that when you have kids of your own, they'll be able to share it. That's how that works. And so we're always trying to look forward, look to the future, and highlight the wonders of our collection. And then we have guest stars that come in, like Shakespeare's first folio. So we're very, very pleased to be the host site, the only one in Montana, as we said before, to be able to share it. And I was going to give Julie a hard time because do you ever refuse, refuse to budge an inch, Julie? That's another one. At that, too, is a Shakespeare uh, piece of language. Or do you ever go on a wild goose chase? That's Shakespeare. So he's around us a lot. He lives inside of our language. He also lives inside of other people's plays, lots of movies, lots of operas things that symphonies play, music that is, and so Shakespeare has inspired a lot of creative energy around the world, across generations, and has had a huge impact on how we live today. One of the Shakespeare plays that you might be familiar with without even knowing that you're familiar with is The Lion King from Disney which is basically an adaptation of, of the Hamlet story, so the struggle 
um, that Hamlet goes through retold out on the African savanna. So if you're familiar with The Lion King, then you know a little bit about Shakespeare's storytelling style. I love, as a librarian, bringing people together around books and art and literature and culture. This is a really important exhibit for me personally because it feels like such a gift for me as a librarian to be able to do this in the state of Montana, to bring this book to our community. We wouldn't have been able to have something like this here otherwise. I know that Shakespeare can seem sometimes kind of dry, kind of old, the language can be kind of tricky sometimes, but I think that the themes that Shakespeare talks about are themes that anybody can relate to, and particularly that, that teenagers and students can relate to, right? Shakespeare writes a lot about youth. Hamlet was young, Romeo and Juliet are young. Um, all of these characters that are so iconic that I think speak to sort of our shared humanity, no matter where we are, in, in what time, in what place, I think that there's something about Shakespeare that can speak to all of us. And as Barbara was saying, something about this physical book hopefully will help you connect to Shakespeare in a new and different way and help you connect not only to Shakespeare but to the arts, to theater and to literature, to museums and to libraries and to each other because so much of Shakespeare's plays are about how we relate to other people and how we form relationships with other people. So I hope if you get a chance to come and see this book that you will visit us on campus and see this extraordinary item. We're really happy to be talking with you. Again, it's the first folio, the book that gave us Shakespeare, May 9 through May 31st, that's 2016 of course, at the University of Montana in Missoula, in Montana. And we're here for everybody and we invite everyone to come join us.